Hey guys, Ivan here, and I'm sure you already know that Rafael Brenda won Arnold Classic Brazil and it was a very much deserved victory. Uh, he crushed it basically. So this guy, he has very classic lines, and when you look at him, you think he might be smaller than the other open pros, but not really. He, he isn't. He's actually really big. He just has that kind of classic shape, but really, he, he's actually a big guy. You're gonna see in a second in a comparison. Uh, but here you can see, like, he brought good conditioning. He filled up really hard. Like, him and Chris Asita, they did that. They, like, they, they carved him up, like, heavy. And uh, he was really full, not as conditioned, not as dry, maybe, but really full, blasting full. And, you know, you could say it worked, you know, like, uh, a little bit fuller with these classic lines, not super dry, it worked, but... Is that really what brought him the victory? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think the other guys were even close to Rafael Brandao. It wasn't even funny. Like The guy on the right here, I mean, you'll see in other poses like side and back poses, he looked like very hard, you know, he looked maybe more matured, maybe in even better conditioning than Rafael, but shape-wise, I mean... You kind of need to have Raphael's genetics to be like one of the top pros. The other guys, they don't have the genetics. They have enough muscle and they have conditioning. And, you know, that's enough to be like a low-level pro. But still, an open pro, that's success by itself. But like to be a top pro like Raphael, you need shape. And Raphael has an amazing shape. But if he brings up like the size even more and that maturity, he's going to be one of the very very few top pros, but right now he's like in the middle there. Uh, the guy on the left, <laughs> from the front, <laughs> compared to Raphael, I mean, come on, let's not even compare these guys. It's, it's uncomparable, really, uh, shape-wise, like not even close. From the front, you're gonna see in a second from the side and from the back, it wasn't really this big of a difference. But from the front, like, Rafael looks like an absolutely clear winner. And Rafael had uh, the best legs, for sure, from the front, at least. Now, from the side, as you can see, the other two guys, they're showing that thickness, you know, that Rafael is missing. Uh, that might make you feel like Rafael is a classic guy. He needs more, uh, like, back-to-chest uh, density. He simply needs to get bigger if he wants to be, like, a top six Mr. Olympia contender. And now here from the back, you can see the other two guys. They looked really good, like glutes, hamstrings, uh, back, lower back, overall, like, everything from behind. Uh, the other two guys probably beat Rafael. They are thicker, they are more conditioned, they are harder, denser. Like, they looked good from the back. Uh, both the back lat spread and, and the back double bicep. Uh, but that was about it. Those two back poses were uh, Rafael's weakest. But other than that, Rafael dominated this stage. As you can see from the side, the other two guys are holding their, their own. While I was watching this, I thought, well, maybe Rafael loses. Maybe in, in person it looks different. Like maybe the other guys have more maturity, you know, more hardness, density. And uh, from what I heard, like the fans, Brazilian fans are really crazy about Rafael. And I'm sure it also had a, a little effect on the judges. I mean, judges are humans after all. And if the audience is really cheering for the guy, it definitely, you know, helps. But again, it, it was a deserved win. Even though the other two guys maybe had more density and hardness from the side and from the back, they almost got in a fight here. Rafael still deserves to beat them. I also have to mention the 5th place finisher, the guy on the left here, Amir Omeragic, he brought the best conditioning here, look at the hardness from the back, I mean, in the lower lats, the glutes, the hamstrings, he really brought it, and uh, the amazing thing here is that this guy is only 20 freaking 2, or 23 right now, but very young age, and he's uh, battling against these guys who are like 10, 20 years older than him, and he's matching them with maturity, with conditioning, with size, with fullness and everything, and this guy has a bright future ahead of him. First, he needs to fix that gyno, and then he needs to add more tissue to make his physique fulfill its full potential. Real quick, before we move on, I just want to introduce to you guys Vintage Blast. It is a pre-workout from the old school labs. It is absolutely amazing pre-workout. I absolutely love it. My personal favorite flavor is peach lemonade, but it's not only about the flavor, it's a really an amazing product, great ingredients. If you guys want to support myself and my channel, uh, try this product out, but click on the link in the description of this video and use the code EVAN, and you're gonna get a 12% discount. Thank you guys, so let's move on. 
What happened with Sibusi Sukotelo? That's the question and uh, everybody was wondering what happened, why was he disqualified? So he made that official post and here he explained exactly what happened. It's a lengthy post, I won't read the whole thing, uh, but mainly you're gonna get the point. So he says, I just woke up now after my coach ordered me to rest up and try forgetting about the misfortune we had suffered yesterday. Well, more I was like given a melatonin to knock me the hell out. Now, apparently he wasn't writing this, I don't think he's speaks very fluent English, somebody else wrote this for him, hopefully he feels the same way that they wrote this, apparently it seems like he's uh, pretty positive about what happened, I mean he can't be happy of course, but you can't change the past, it seems like he accepted what happened happened and he's gonna try his best for the next show, anyways here's what happened, so he says there was a huge miscommunication between myself and one of the MPC promoters. I was there on time for my tan and then was given the wrong poster for the show and only got given the schedule an hour before the show, before the prejudge, when I had made my way back to the hotel and by the time I was on Wi-Fi to see the schedule, it was a bit too late. So basically, somehow he, he didn't understand when his category is gonna start and he went back to the hotel and he missed his prejudging. I mean, this is like bodybuilder's nightmare. You guys know that I compete myself and I know the anxiety that you get backstage when you're worried about you're gonna miss your, your category and this happened to this guy and he's a pro and guys, I'm telling you, he could have won this show and he knows that. He knows that he was one of the best bodybuilders in this show and he missed this. So, this is a horrible disaster. I really hope he's not watching this right now and that he can try and forget this as soon as possible and just focus on the next show. Uh, it's not the end of the world. There are many shows left uh, in this uh, spring season of shows and uh, this guy looks amazing. So he did a posing routine actually at the finals. It was just like for the fans, of course, but you know, he looked really freaking good. I mean, just look at him, guys, and tell me what do you think could have he won this show? I think it's pretty possible. His weakness before were his legs. Were his legs weak here? Hell no! Hell no, his legs were humongous. And he was really big, like he has those crazy muscle bellies, and like he was in good shape. And uh, look at this, I mean, this guy is really genetically blessed, and I'm thinking the next show he does, he's going to win that show. Indie Pro, if he's, if he's doing it, he is winning that show. I don't think Justin Rodriguez can beat this guy. So I'm pretty sure, I'm not sure how he would look against the other guys in comparison, but from what I'm seeing right here, and mind, guys, this is him stressed the hell out. Like, this is after finding out that he missed the prejudging. So his stress level here is super high and he cannot feel good. His body is definitely looking a little bit worse than it would if everything was fine. And he still looks like, I would say, the best bodybuilder on that stage. I think this guy would have beaten Rafael Brandao if he competed. Now, I don't know if this is a good thing for him to hear or a bad thing. But he could have won this show if he didn't miss his category. What a nightmare. Horrible disaster. I can't believe this happened to a bodybuilder, actually, to a pro bodybuilder. A guy that could have won Arnold Classic title. He could have won the title. Maybe I'm mistaking. Maybe he couldn't have won it. But, guys, second place at least. At least a runner-up at the Arnold Classic Brazil. What a, what a disaster, so anyways, he looked amazing, he didn't make it, Rafael won it, um, I guess Rafael was lucky that this happened, because this guy would have pushed him at least, and I'm thinking he probably would have beaten him, he looks bigger, and uh, probably has even prettier shape, like, he's very aesthetic, and just look at these freaking muscle bellies, like, this is Phil Heath, uh, uh, Phil Heath genetics with wider shoulders, so this guy, Huge potential, huge potential, uh, I'm sure whichever show he does next, he's going to win it, I think after watching this posing video that he would he won the Arnold Classic Brazil, whatever you guys think though, tell me in the comment section down below, like this video if you enjoyed it, and for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys, thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.